lock, 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 lock it in and rip, 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 rip the knob off. Red State Talk Radio. My Parents Open Carry, a pro-gun kids book from White Feather Press. 13-year-old Brenna and her parents spend their day in typical fashion. But what's not so typical is that Brenna's parents lawfully open carry handguns for self-defense. And the Strongs join a growing number of families who are standing up for their Second Amendment right and bringing gun ownership out of the closet. Order your copy of this unique kids book at MyParentsOpenCarry.com. It's a bumpy ride through the political jungle with Nate and Brian. Believe me, if I started murdering people, there'd be none of you left. What? If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-350-3211. That's 800-350-3211. Again, 800-350-3211. Whenever I'm feeling a little down under, I can always count on Nate and Brian for their interesting perspective on topics important to freedom and civil rights by listening to the At Odd Show. Nate and Brian cover important topics with insight, intelligence, and, of course, humor. I can always expect a laugh or two. So if you want to be informed and have a great time, give these guys a listen. At odds. The Ed Odd Show with the greatest political talk show hosts in history, Nate and Brian. Nate and it's sad that they actually believe that. So give a listen because the delusional need love too. Are you looking for some way cool t-shirts? Check out ChuckDug.com. They have hundreds of crazy fun t-shirts like gun, patriotic, and you better believe zombie shirts. At ChuckDug.com, you'll find quality shirts at a quality price. All shirts start at just 10 bucks with free shipping over 50 bucks. Mention Radio 1 coupon code at checkout and grab a cool 10% off. That's ChuckDug.com. T-shirts with attitude. Hi, I'm Brian. And I'm Nate. If you like the Ad Odd Show, and we know you do, why not order your very own Ad Odds t shirt sizes small to 6XL in a cool black color? So, support our show, check out the great prices at chugdug.com, or head over to our website, adoddshow.com, and click the link. And, unlike listening to our show, you won't be disappointed. And Brian, and may you be in heaven a half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. All right, well, Steve messed that one up. It's I guess we haven't been doing this long enough for it to be routine yet. What concession <clears throat> earned eight hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars in just five months at the Chicago World's Fair in nineteen thirty-three? We had some guesses. We had corn dogs, corn dogs, Coca-Cola, el- and elephant ears. Cotton candy, hot dogs. But it's I'm not talking about food. I'm talking about a service. Pay for a service. Public water. It wasn't that, but it was close. Yeah, it could be. Kind of. You ready? So what, 
Yeah. What was it? Yeah, what was it? Well, I think they're <clears throat> illegal now in the United States. You can't have these anymore. Oh. But then it lawn was... Lawn darts. It was, uh, yeah, it was a, a restroom. So you paid oh, five okay. cents a visit. Yeah. Uh, which was uh, 17,240,000 nickels. Yeah. And you came up with I how many a day? That's a, about 114,000 people per, using the bathroom per day. That's 80, about 80 people per minute. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot of yeah. a lot of bathroom usage. Yeah. I would not want to have to clean them. No, they probably didn't. No, <laughs> they probably didn't. But you imagine making sixteen million dollars a day just on yeah. bathrooms. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Um but I was so You charged me more than nickel to use your bathroom. Two things. Yeah, I'm wondering if it was I mean, yeah, that's the math and it's a cool number. I wonder if people like would throw a quarter in or something, you know, the rich people. They didn't have it. So they didn't have a nickel that they, they didn't had have to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really have to go. Here's a dollar. Or yeah. some some just said, well, this is going to be more than a nickel's worth. I mean, that... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, here's I, I, had, I had the corn dogs. <laughs> here's an extra nickel to keep the plunger <laughs> plunger handy. So here's the other thing. When elephant ears, I thought was a good was a, yes, yeah. was a good guess. So I did a little research and got completely disappointed. Uh -huh. And I'm not sure if I can ever eat one again because <laughs> according to Wikipedia, yeah. elephant ears. Yeah. Uh, or the thought fried dough sure. originated in Canada. Ooh. It's a Canadian food. What? Yeah. what? When? Uh, it doesn't say when. Nobody really knows. Uh, of course, in Canada, they call them beaver tails. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Because Canada has beavers and the United States has elephants. <laughs> <laughs> we could have come up with muskrats or something. Well, I mean, the ones... The ones we make in the United States look a lot more like an elephant's ear than they look like a, a beaver's tail. A very small elephant. Yeah, a, a tiny little elephant. Other names, fried dough, fry bread, fried yeah, bread, dough boys. It's Native American. Beignet, I mean, yeah, uh, beignet, yeah, it's kind of close. Elephant ear scones, pizza f uh, frying saucers. <laughs> That's the Frying saucers? I've never heard that. That's awesome. That's what I'm going to call them from now on. I'd like a couple of frying <laughs> saucers. Frying saucers. <laughs> I bet the Canadians, what they did is they probably scored the dough in a crisscross oh, you think, pattern you think that so? looked like a beaver's tail. Let me look up an image. You do that, and I'll talk about this day in history. Because on this day in history, in 1775, George Washington accepts an assignment to lead the Continental Army. Brian? What? I'm right, aren't I? <laughs> You're right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> they look like beaver tails. Yep. Oh, those tricky canadians <laughs> when it when canada attacks and they will we got to be ready <laughs> tricky canadians i'm oh, sorry this day in history what washington accepts uh, the assignment to lead the continental army oh well, wow he'd yeah. been managing his family farm and stuff and he was serving in the uh, virginia house of burgesses when the second second continental congress unanimously voted to have him led have him lead the revolutionary army now i don't think he was there for the vote <laughs> And yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, like, Washington. Wait, where's where's George? He's not here. Well, he gets it. He did. He did have military experience. Yeah. He was a commander for the British yeah. Army in the French and Indian War of seventeen fifty four. He he was yeah. It was a risky choice. It not, was. Not I'm sure he was the best choice. It it worked out. It worked out. So it ended up being the right choice. But I don't know, I man. Think he was motivated. He got lucky. But he didn't really want to do it. I don't think. I mean, he knew what a commitment it was going to be. Oh, probably didn't think he would live. And, yeah, and what a target he was. Yeah. But uh, the rest, as they say, is hey, history. It got foggy, and he got lucky. So it was, you know, June 15th, 1775, <clears throat> wow. Georgie Porgy got picked as commander of the Army. Wow, the same day that the uh, Counter-Revolutionary Warfare Commission was created in England? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't look any more no, past that. That one's hilarious. But speaking of uh, counterterrorism, oh yeah, Dennis Rodman is our greatest hero. Yeah, he really is. Yeah. Uh, what a he brave man! Went to North Korea again. Again, yeah. yeah. Um, not sure why. He he said he's trying oh, to. He's, King Jong Un, oh, they he, love uh, Dennis Rodman. Uh, it's because he's so tall and he just can't understand it. But oh, I look he, up to you, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> Way up to you. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, oh, he said he's trying to improve the relations. He was asked by a reporter, is this uh, in concert with the Trump administration? Like, do they know about it, and are you working with them? And he said, 
Well, I think they're very happy about it. The Koreans? North Korean the Trump Korean? administration. Oh, they're happy that he's they there? They asked Dennis Rodman. Well, he you, was working with the Trump administration for his trips and yeah. this whole effort. He didn't really answer the question. Sure, he, he said wasn't. they're happy. Yeah. He, he said that. He, Dennis Rodman said he thinks the Trump administration is happy with but it. They haven't said that. No, I, they didn't say that. Well, let's, let's, you want to read the gifts he brought? I mean, these are fantastic. Oh, this is this is amazing. And okay, this is what he brought and gave to uh, <laughs> Kim yeah, Jong Un. So the best one is he brought a copy of the Art of the Deal, right. one of Trump's, Trump's uh, probably his most popular book, right. which is hilarious. Mm-hmm. He <laughs> he brought a copy of Where's Waldo? Oh, you crazy Americans! You <laughs> crazy Waldo! I never a, find him in there. A, a mermaid puzzle. Right. <laughs> Two sets of soap because yeah. Kim, Kim, uh, Kim Jong-un is a little smelly. Yep. <laughs> and autographed jerseys. Yeah. I assume his own. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't. Yeah. They were football Maybe jerseys. Maybe like, my, I was thinking like Muggsy Bogues or something that, you know, about the same height as them. One of the shorter baseball players or bas- baseball. Well, it might have been a baseball jersey. I don't know. But, but that's hilarious. He brings Trump's book, mm-hmm. which is funny. Right. I mean, is he in North Korean prison yet? I don't know why he isn't. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Well, because he's so much bigger than all of yeah. them. Oh, we can't take him down. He's like, Godzilla! <laughs> it's horrible. So oh, I just oh, want to oh, say that the, the comments made on the show, uh, they don't reflect the, the thoughts and feelings of everybody on the show. Oh. I know not all Asian people are afraid of Godzilla. Oh, Godzilla! Thank God. Oh, Godzilla! I don't think Dennis Rodman is doing any good for anybody. Except Dennis Rodman. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, for him. Uh, he gets uh, another 15 minutes of fame. It's risky. I mean, does yeah. he really think that they won't do anything Hold to him, him no matter what? Yeah. I mean, they probably think that he's a huge icon here, that it would be like taking a trophy from us if sure. they held him. Yeah. Uh, and they and might. Make him play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> well, North they have, Korea want to be great in basketball at the Olympics. They have played games, right? I don't know. I think so. Yeah, it's no one knows it's, what they did. It's there. hilarious. It's hilarious. That other guy just came back, right? That was he was in a hard labor camp in a coma. I don't remember his name, um, but he was an American that was that was taken uh, charged with like fifteen years of hard labor because he took down like a political poster or something in North Korea. Yeah, th- but he'd just been sentenced. <laughs> He wasn't in prison uh, that been long. There a year, maybe, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so he's in a coma, and he's back here. They released oh, okay. him, and he's in a coma. Okay. And they were like, "We don't know what happened." And I'm like, "North Korea probably doesn't have good health care, so that's probably what happened." But yeah, it's horrible. It's absolutely terrible. He's like in his twenties. Yeah, I know. It was horrible. a stupid mistake, and he's paid for it. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I agree. It, but it's it's I, I what's horrible about it is that the, there's a country that would do that. Right. I mean, we're close. We're getting there. We don't really do hard labor too much. No, well, you'd just be a felon and you'd lose your gun rights. Yeah, right. And that's and, okay. And you wouldn't be able to that's get okay. a job anymore because you're a felon. Not good jobs. All right, so I guess we'll move on. Mm-hmm. But we talked about Gabriella Giffords at a... Naval <clears throat> vessel named after her. It was a yep. battleship? I don't know what it was. The USS Gabriella Giffords. Yep. Naming marks the 16th time a ship has been named for a woman. Oh, that's cool. And the 13th time one has been named after a living person. And the first time that it was a gun-free battleship ever made. Yeah, there's no guns on no it guns. at all. Yeah. And it has a... It has a big hole in the bathroom. A hole in the head. Oh, that's horrible. That's, that's pretty funny. Oh, it's not funny at all. Oh, yeah, a hole in the head. It's Absolutely terrible. See, in the Navy, Absolutely they call bathrooms job. heads. You're shaking your head in disgust. Yeah, it's it's horrible. Also, this is old news. <laughs> I don't understand why it was just reported. I mean, this has been known for a year or two. 22 years. 22 years they knew it was going to be the Gabby Giffords? Yeah. I don't think that's true, but okay, that's fine. Ah, terrible jokes. I think maybe they knew it was going to be named, but now it's now it is. Con- uh, commissioned or whatever, and they probably broke a champagne bottle. Did you bottle. read why? 